Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to do a show and tell style video showing you guys some of my favorite locality boas. If you've been following the channel for a while, you can see how some of them have been progressing. If you're new to the channel, you can see some of the beautiful boas that I'm lucky to have in my collection. So be sure to stay tuned. So as I mentioned, this is more of a show and tell style video where I'm just going to get out a bunch of really beautiful locality boas showing the diversity of the different animals in my collection. And I used to do these videos quite often. I haven't done them lately, largely because a lot of my boas are in breeding trials right now, so I can't really get them out and disturb them. But I thought I'd, I'd grab some of the animals that aren't breeding this year just to show you guys. So these are either animals which have already bred, but they're just having the year off this year, or there are animals that I'm growing up as future breeders. And to start with, this is a uh, 2016 born female long tail boa or longicata boa. Just a beautiful, beautiful animal. You can see the dark colors that these longicata boas are known for. And this female has reached adult size, and this is about as dark as she's going to get. But I just love the dark, rich blacks and how well they contrast with the yellows and caramels and browns and the speckling on the belly. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous example of the uh, long tail or tombs boa. Uh, known as the tombs boa because this is a small uh, area on the border of Peru and Ecuador where they originate. And what they're really famous for are these beautiful dark head markings. And the best examples have these beautiful blotches right down their cheeks and the dark markings on the top of their head as well. Just a gorgeous looking animal. This female is full size. She's probably about six feet long. So they're kind of a medium sized boa, not too big. They're really enjoyable to handle and they make great pets. So definitely one of the most underrated of the locality boas. The people that like these boas and that work with them just really love them. They definitely have a cult following. Right now, I still have some babies that this female produced and they're now about six months old. So if you're looking to get a longicata for your collection, this is a great opportunity. So just reach out to me. You can see pictures of them at my Flickr site. Uh, but you know, great locality boa for the collector or for the pet keeper. Next, we have another really great underrated, underrated locality boa. This is a Pearl Island boa or saboge boa. Like the long tail boa we just saw, they're both subspecies. They formerly were subspecies of boa constrictor, uh, boa constrictor longicata, boa constrictor saboge. Now considered by most to be subspecies of boa imperator, boa imperator longicata, boa imperator saboge. So this is a Pearl Island boa. These are arguably the most divergent of the different boa constrictor subspecies. They're really elongated. They have a really characteristic head shape, kind of a very long shape of their head with flared nostrils and these really big prominent eyes. And then behaviorally, they're also very distinctive. As you can see, they're very, very active. They just don't want to sit still. Handling them is more like handling a calibre. They just always on the move. So definitely a, a different type of boa if you're looking for something different to add to the collection, uh, to your own collection. And beautiful looking animals as well. They have these golden brown, kind of hypomelanistic look to them. They have a lot of iridescence. And many of them have reduced or even absent saddles. You can see this female is largely patternless. So this is a 2014 female. She bred for the first time last year had a litter, I think it was around seven babies. So they have kind of small litters of very large, well-developed babies. And she's got the year off this year. I actually have my other female breeding right now. So with any hopes, we should have some more of these beauties sometime this spring. They're usually my first litter, or definitely one of my first litters born every year. They, they mate early and they have their litters very early. So. I'll be hoping for another litter of these probably sometime in May, so be sure to stay tuned. But the uh, Saboge or Pearl Island boa is definitely an interesting underrated locality boa. After handling that Pearl Island boa, I wanted to grab a boa that was a little more uh, subdued and not as uh, moving around as the Saboge. And I grabbed this. This is a Suriname red tail. And you wouldn't think normally that most true red tails are uh, mellow and subdued, but this particular animal is probably my most mellow 
true red tail. He's such a joy to handle. In fact, his behavior is more like a Colombian boa in terms of how mellow and subdued he is when I take him out. And this guy was actually a recent addition to the collection. Uh, I just got him last year. And the story is that one of the Brian Boa's viewers reached out to me. He had this boa that he unfortunately had to find a new home for. And um, so I managed to acquire this animal and uh, I'm really happy that I did. This is a 2019 born animal produced by Brian Abramson, Abramson from Florida Red Tails and Tuta Hope Bloodlines. And he calls this cross a Florida, uh, Tuta Flirt, so Tuta Hope. FLRT Florida Red Tail. And this animal is just such a nice animal, super mellow. I love his colors. He's got this beautiful pink color on the side, this beautiful tan on this back, nice red tail, and just a super mellow animal. And what's great about this guy is that he brings in some new genes so I can cross him with some of my females from my other main bloodlines, and I can diversify the collection genetically. And so this guy, I imagine, will be ready to breed probably in another two years, maybe three years, depending. Um, and he'll be ready to grace my boa breeding, my Suriname breeding projects with his great genes, uh, both as far as his looks and as far as his temperament. Just a really, really cool boa. And happy to have this Tudor Flirt Suriname red tail in the collection. Next we have another really popular locality boa. This is a Hog Island boa. This female was born here in 2018 and she's a pure Sears bloodline animal. So you can see the beautiful light colors and looking closely all of the pinks and greens and oranges that define this locality. And uh, I haven't produced these guys in the last few years. My male, who is her father, my adult male, it just hasn't been in the mood for whatever reason, but this year I have my fingers crossed. I have a younger male that's in my breeding trials as well, so hopefully he should get the job done and we should produce some more of these beautiful Hog Island boas born sometime over the summer. But we'll just have to see. Unfortunately, there's no guarantees with breeding boas. And uh, Hog Island boas have been around for quite a while, one of the earliest available localities uh, available back as early as the 70s and 80s uh, and they've just become quite popular lately but unfortunately the supply has dried up it's getting harder to find these animals lately unfortunately a lot of people have crossed them into morph projects uh, but this female is 100 percent pure sears bloodline hog island boa i anticipate this female will probably be, re be ready to breed in the next uh, couple of years maybe even next year we'll just have to see Right now, she's probably about maybe four and a half feet long, been putting on some size. Uh, these guys are kind of a dwarf-ish boa. Adults are typically anywhere from about four to seven feet long. So she's getting kind of close to her peak size, but we'll just have to see. Hopefully she'll put on another, you know, six inches to nine inches in the next year uh, before going into breeding. Uh, but great locality animal to work with, the Hog Island boa. Here's another holdback female from 2018 who's not quite ready to breed. This is a Tar Humara Mountain Boa, arguably the smallest of the locality boas. This female is, she's about four feet long, so this is about as big as she's gonna get. And I chose not to breed her this year. She was kind of in between. You know, I'd rather give her another year. So she'll go into breeding trials in 2023 to 2024. But just beautiful, beautiful animal. Uh, you can see all the pinks that she's got and the beautiful circle back pattern. And these Atari Himara boas also tend to be one of the more mellow locality boas as far as handling. Although she's moving around quite a bit right now. Maybe just getting a little freaked out for the camera or, you know, maybe my energy is kind of hyper today. Um, but typically they're a little more mellow than this. But great animal to work with. These guys have gotten harder to find. They've gotten really popular the last couple of years. So hopefully more people will be producing them and the supply will increase. I've got a breeding trials going on right now and hope to have more uh, sometime over the summer. So please stay tuned for that. If you're looking to get a beautiful Tar Humar uh, boa to add to your collection or a pair for a future breeding trial, 
I hope to have uh, a number of animals available later this year. Thought I'd grab a holdback animal born just this last 2022 breeding season. This is a male Venezuelan true red tail. This guy is now about six months old, developing nicely. And I was really super happy to produce these Venezuelans this year, first time I produced them. They're one of the rarer types of true red tails. You know, you typically see the Guiana and Suriname pretty commonly. And you see the Peruvian and North Brazilian, not quite as commonly, but uh, you can find them. But these Venezuelans are just super hard to find. Very few breeders working with them. This guy is from a pair that I got from Terry Cullen. Um, and this was a bloodline descended from animals collected at the small village of Tamatama in southern Venezuela at the confluences of the uh, rivers Orinoco and Casaquare, if you want to look at a map. But it's in southern Venezuela. Um, there's some other Venezuelan bloodlines as well that are available that I, you know, some I do have in my collection. It's not entirely clear where these other bloodlines came from. Superficially, they look pretty similar to the, the Tamatama bloodline. Um, you know, one of these is the, the Rio Bravo bloodline, and I have some animals that are actually in breeding trials right now. So, hope to produce some of these Rio Bravo Venezuelan red tails born uh, later this year if things go well. But they're really cool. Uh, they don't get quite as big as other true red tails. The um, saddles tend to be non peaked or slightly peaked. They tend to have these kind of bow tie shaped saddles. And then the, the body color is kind of a yellowish orange, um, a little lighter than Suriname's, a little more like a Peruvian in terms of the background color. And then they have these nice long, kind of more of a rusty red, not quite as bright as the Suriname's, more like the Peruvian. Um, but just a really cool true red tail to work with. These adults are about five to six feet. They're not really big uh, as far as uh, compared to other true red tails. I wouldn't call them a dwarf, but they're not going to get to giant sizes. So a great true red tail to work with if you want one that's not going to get as big. Uh, the Venezuelan true red tail boa. Another true red tail, this one from Peru. This is a Procalpa type Peruvian red tail, female born here in 2015. And this female had her first litter last year. She actually produced my only litter of Peruvians born in 2022. Small litter of four babies. And uh, she's putting on some more weight after you know having that litter, recovering nicely. And uh, she should be ready to breed again next year. Uh, get, you know, of course, getting the year off this year, but just a beautiful animal. I just love this golden color and the speckling on the belly. It's really great animal. Uh, incidentally, you can see she has mildly peaked saddles. And I've been getting some questions lately about the peaking in the saddles and whether that identifies the type of boa. There's this misunderstanding that Surinams and Guianas always have the peak saddles and that Peruvians and non-red tails don't. The truth is that any type of red tail can have either peaked or non-peaked saddles. You see it more commonly among the Surinams and Guianas, but uh, the Peruvians can have it as well as you know, the North Brazilians typically will have it and the Venezuelans can even have it. But sometimes they don't. Some Surinams and Guianas have perfectly round saddles and I can assure you they're 100% pure Suriname or Guiana. You can't tell the boa's ancestry by the shape of the saddles. Some non-red tails, boa imperators, can also have the peak saddles. So, um, you know, some people like the peak saddles, some people don't. I think most people do. Uh, some people really prefer them. Some people like round saddles. I think it's all great. There's so many different looks of boa constrictor. They're all equally appealing in my view. And this peaked female, um, she had the litter last year. I held back a couple. I have one female baby that's available. I haven't got around to putting pictures up on my Flickr site, but I intend to once I get a free minute. And if you're looking for a really high quality uh, Peruvian red tail, this female might be the one for you. I have some pairings going on right now, so I hope to have more Peruvian babies later this year. If you've been following the channel, you might know that Peruvians have been a little more challenging for me to breed consistently than the Surinams, but fingers crossed on a successful litter for 2024, or 2023. One more Suriname holdback. This is a female. I don't take out a lot. She's a little bit wild, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous Suriname, born here in 2017. 
It's actually Prometheus himself sired this animal, his last litter. And this female is really developing nicely. You can see that beautiful pinkish orange coloration that she's got that's been intensifying over time. I love the look of her saddles. They're kind of peaked, but a little bit blocky and irregular. And nice, beautiful, long red tail. So this female is a little wild. I don't really handle her all that often because she's kind of crazy. She's not really aggressive, just kind of doesn't sit still. Um, but uh, lately I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys on how much you like this animal, so I thought I'd grab her. And then maybe she'll calm down a little bit once I handle her a little bit more. She might be ready to breed next year. She's uh, put on some nice size this year. She was kind of small for a while, but she's probably put on about uh, maybe eight inches to a foot last year. Definitely she feels more bulky and more muscular, more like an adult. Uh, you can see she just doesn't want to sit still, but beautiful Suriname from the Prometheus bloodline, 2017 female holdback. One more boa for today's video. I thought I'd grab one that was definitely more mellow than those two red tails we just saw. This is a female Branchia Columbia boa imperator. Beautiful, beautiful animal. She's now going on three years old. So the last locality I actually added to the collection was the Branchia locality. Got a really nice trio from my buddy, Michael Beach. This is one of the females. And just a superb animal. These Branchia, arguably, it's hard to pick a favorite, but this may very well be my favorite type of locality boa. Not a true red tail, but just as nice, if not better. Um, I just love the color and contrast on these guys and the beautiful pattern and look at the uh, beautiful colors and how what these white dashes stand out from the saddles and look at that beautiful rusty red tail they're also more mellow uh, than red tails much easier to handle easier as far as husbandry this is just the type of the boa that really has everything going for it in my opinion the branchia columbia boa and in fact pretty much all columbia boas columbian boas tend to be great pets, beautiful to look at, mellow to handle, and uh, the husbandry is also more straightforward and forgiving than most other locality boas. So you can't beat a Colombian boa. Um, I don't, I, you know, this female is obviously not breeding yet, probably at least another two years. So I anticipate I'll probably put the, my branchia into breeding trials uh, in um, probably 2024 to 2025. We'll just have to see. Um, I had actually my litter of of, Columbia, of Coops Pastel Colombian Boas last year in 2022. Still have a couple remaining. Most of those guys have gone to new homes, but have a couple available. But the, the Branchia I probably won't have for another you know two years or so at the minimum. But just enjoying watching them grow. They've been growing pretty fast. So this girl is uh, going on three years old, and she's now close to five feet. And I'm feeding her medium and large rats. You know, technically the mediums before they kind of had the size deflation or inflation, however you want to call it. The larges now are, are what mediums were like two years ago, but she's eating pretty good size rats and you know, putting on the size. Definitely growing faster than my two red tails. But just love this animal, love my branchia Columbia boas and locality I definitely would recommend for the pet owner or the locality collector. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this informal look at some of my favorite boas and how they're doing. Um, as always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.